on the bench today we're going to do a deep dive into op amp gain but before we get started please like and subscribe because that's what fuels the channel and now let's take a look at the schematic here's a schematic that is typical of say an mxr micro amp or a broco rat distortion plus ds1 from boss all use the same schematic layout which is called a non-inverting op amp gain stage and the gain is really defined by these two resistors r feedback and r1 this is the formula one plus rf over r1 so for for example, if this was 2000 ohms and this was 1000 ohms, 2000 divided by 1 plus 2 plus 1 makes a gain of 3. So if we put 1 volt in, we're going to get 3 volts out. Easy peasy. Now if we put 5 volts in, we'll get 15 volts out, but our power supply is a 9 volt battery. So this will clip and different op amps clip in different ways as well. And we rely on both the op amp clipping and the clipping of the clipping network, i.e. soft clippers going around the outside or hard clippers on the output stage. So the distortion that we'll get it will be a combination of the op amp clip and the clip created by the clipping diodes and that will give us a different harmonic response. And also another thing to consider is the bandwidth of the of the op amp. So for example in a pro call rat the, the op amp is a very poor quality one. It has what's called a poor slew rate and that has a frequency limiting ability. So the harmonics that come out of one side versus say a TL072 uh, that you find in a lot of modern pedals is that the pro -core will attenuate a lot of the harmonics before they even get a chance to come out of the op amp. Now I took the liberty of writing some numbers down here as well. So the feedback resistor is 56k and 2.7k is R micro amp. It's, it's an interesting circuit because you increase R1 to reduce the gain. But let's just look at max gain and the max gain is 25 in the in the preamp circuits. Okay, it's identical by the way to the distortion plus but the, the resistor value in RF is much larger so you get much higher gain on the distortion plus so this is like 28 dBs log 25 times 20 gives us 28 dB so that's how we convert it over to a log scale our hearing is logarithmic ie we hear quieter sounds better than we hear noisier sounds and that's why we use the, the logarithmic scale if we look at the rat the feedback resistor is 100k on full and then the network that forms R1 it's actually two resistors and two capacitors on the rat gives us an equivalent resistance of 43 ohms at a certain frequency so a lot of this is frequency dependent as well because of this capacitor and so when the pot is on full we're getting 67 dBs again or 2305 in voltage gain so we put one volt in and technically you should get 2305 volts out but you've got a nine volt limit on the the op amp and that limit varies between op amp types by the way so some op amps will start to clip the plus voltage before they clip the negative voltage some will, will clip both identical but uh, if we turn it down, 50k gain of 1100, turn it further down, 20k, which I believe on the Proco Rat is kind of about halfway because it's got a, it's got an audio taper. We're looking at gain 465 or 53 dBs, but a lot of this is frequency dependent. What I'd like to use is an MXR microamp because that one's really easy in terms of you plug a signal in and what you get out is actually the real performance of, of the op amp. If I use the Rat, which we're going to look in, which we are going to do a deep deeper dive on. But that's got clipping diodes and it's also got a filter section on the output. So for our first experiment, uh, let's take a look at the microamp. I've got the pedal plugged in now and the pedal is off and the gain is set down to zero, which means that R1 is around 500k, RF is 56k, 56 divided by 500 is a small number and then we add one to it, which effectively gives us a gain of one. So what comes in uh, equals what comes out in dBs is uh, 0 dB gain. So let me switch on the pedal. There you can see there's a little bit of noise on my power supply, but it's identical to the signal, so we've got a gain of 1. Turn it up about halfway. We have 2.2 volts peak to peak output now. 800 into 2.2 is about a gain of say two ish. And so the feedback resistor is 56. So with this set to halfway, I would estimate that the, the resistance value of this pot now equals something like 20 kilo ohms or less because we have a, a little extra resistor in the MXR if you refer to the schematic. And then we bang it up full. 
and you can see because it's a, it's an analog taper most of the action happens in the last last part of the, the twisting of the thing so now we have the value of this resistor i.e the pot is zero so the gain is fully determined by the feedback resistor and the uh, resistor that is in series with with r1 so that gives us the gain now of of 25 it's a little less on this because when we look at the output there's also a voltage divider network on the output so we're not seeing the full voltage swing of the op amp but that it's fine because it's marginal and so that's about 26 dbs now let's do this let's decrease the frequency and see how the gain changes so i'm going to go down in frequency 900 So that's 100 and now go and now go down to 90 80 just my time base you can see the signal is now smaller go back up in frequency signal gets bigger again so we're looking at the peak to peak voltage. So this is about 10 hertz and you can see the peak to peak is just swinging a graticule either side of the zero volt line on the scope. So we get attenuation at low frequency. So what's that all about? Looks like there's a high pass filter network. So let's go back to our schematic and look at what we've got. Let's look at R1 and then let's look at the capacitor that attaches R1 to ground. We'll just call that C1. In the microamp, R1 is 2.7K. Uh, C1 is 4.7 microfarads. Now we have this formula. Let's talk about XC. Let's talk about the reactance of the capacitor. A reactance is like an impedance. The overall circuit, this is, has an impedance and the impedance is the reactance plus the resistance. What XC does, it's, it's in ohms and it varies with frequency and so with this capacitor going down to ground the lower frequency you have the higher this reactance is going to be and I took the liberty of calculating it out and the higher the frequency is the lower the reactance is going to be so for a 4.7 microfarad capacitor our reactance is calculated by 1 over 2 pi f 4.7 which is C and say our input signal is a kilohertz the reactance of that would be 33 ohms so it's very small uh, marginal compared to the 2.7 so it's not going to change the gain of the circuit much uh, that you would really be able to hear with just uh, adding 33 ohms to 2.7 uh, kilo ohms now if we wind the frequency all the way down to 30 hertz which we did in the last example this number now is no longer 1000 it is 30 which means this number on the bottom smaller number than this one ultimately meaning that the resistance now is 3k3 so we have 3k3 plus 2.7 Seven, that is uh, six six kilo ohms or six thousand ohms, and then we divide that through into our 56k we've halved the gain so we're at about a gain of 12 as opposed to a gain of, of 25 at these lower frequencies so that's going to take some of the the lower end off the circuit and it's always a good practice to to tune up your lower end and this is how you always do it with, with a with an op amp or even a tube amp or even a transistor amp you want to make sure that you can uh, take some of the lower frequencies out so it's it's a more pleasant sound so what i want to do now is actually breadboard this up look at it in even more detail so we've learned about reactants now we're going to learn about phase phase angles and vectors don't be freaked out it's going to be okay I've got the cap and the resistor now hooked up on my prototype board and we're looking at the signal on the scope the yellow is what we'll call VS V supply and then the other signal the blue is the voltage across the capacitor so we can just call that VC now we've learned is the reactants of the, of the capacitor changes i.e. It's, it's resistive element resistive elements the wrong word because it also has a resistive element as well that's the equivalent series resistor we'll, we'll not talk about that right now but it's impedance or it's sorry it's reactance is going to go up and down and it's in ohm so remember when the frequency is low it's not going to conduct at all the reactance is going to be very high and when the frequency is high the capacitor is going to conduct and the reactance is going to be a very low number so currently I've got 
got 1.3 kilohertz as VS and so now I'll turn it down and you can see now we're at 300 Hertz and the signal has, has grown considerably because that capacitor now is conducting less the signal is, is not being forced to ground as much and so its reactance is going to be reasonably high for these low frequencies now we know what VC is because we're measuring it that's the blue we know what VS is which is the yellow but what is the voltage across the resistor if we knew what the voltage across the resistor is then we don't have to rely on the formula 1 over 2 pi fc we could actually measure what the reactance is we have to understand phase difference and an easy way to do it believe it or not and we use vectors to model the phase differences in in this circuit but what we have to be able to do to understand how we do this vector subtraction of vs minus vc to get our vr is pythagoras's theorem let's do a little bit of theory so these are the voltages that make up the circuit vs is the overall voltage vc that we measured is the voltage over the capacitor vr the voltage over the resistor we're going to do it on the scope but once we have all these voltages exactly then we'll be able to calculate the behavior of the circuit and not really depend on these values which of course have a tolerance this could be a 2.1 this could be like 4.3 microfarads because all of these are manufactured on a on a large scale and they're never all identical and that's why they publish a tolerance on the side of each component so you know what window they're within but once we make the measurements we're going to be able to calculate things more exactly now let's go look at the scope now you can see that we've got three waveforms the yellow is vs the overall voltage the blue is the voltage over the capacitor and the red is the voltage across the resistor and we know that vs minus vc equals vr so we're using the math function here to create our third waveform and we're subtracting waveform one from waveform two subtracting yellow from blue to get red and that's how we work out what the final vector or what the final voltage is in our small circuit and now notice each one of these has a different phase offset if I measure the phase difference between red and blue that's going to be 90 degrees because a capacitor has a 90 degrees phase shift now when we have this circuit together with these R's and xc's or x's uh, it's a different phase picture so each one of these has an independent phase the phase difference that we're interested in and this is where we're going to get into some pythagoras in a second is a phase difference between vs and vr let's go back to paper learn a bit more about pythagoras's theorem or get a reminder of pythagoras's theorem and see what it all looks like we can draw all the voltages out and their angles or the different phase differences on a piece of paper and we can treat them as vectors R has no phase difference so that's always going to be straight line and R reference of so VR a voltage over the resistor or R because they're proportional according to Ohm's law and then our capacitor voltage is 90 degrees as we just talked about if we measured this voltage of, over the capacitor and measured the voltage over the resistor we get a value and a value and then we draw those plot those out and draw a line where they join and this is VS so that's a vector addition it's quite simple uh, it's just what they call Cartesian coordinates and then you get to Pythagoras here as we scroll down we're not scrolling down we're moving the paper um, Z squared which is our overall impedance is going to equal X squared plus R squared so Z is X squared plus R squared so once we work out what X squared is by measurement this time not by calculation we'll know what the overall impedance is and what the gain is at that certain frequency so scrolling down a little more I had to do all the math in advance and then we end up with this guy and then also we know from uh, high school math tan of the angle equals the opposite over the adjacent opposite over adjacent and we know what adjacent is our angle so we measured the difference between the red and the yellow on the oscilloscope and we got a time t which is about two point something milliseconds i forgot now but it came out to 25 degrees once we do it as a fraction of 360 so this gives us the time difference is like percentage of this is that so we get 25 degrees and then tan of 25 is half and then we simply plug it in to our opposite over adjacent calculation or formula and we get xc equals 0.5 times r and we know r is about 2.2 and so 0.5 times 2.2 equals 1k and then we'll just for 
reference, we go back to this guy, xc equals 2 pi fc, 2 pi times 30 times 47 microfarads equals 1.1 k. So we're, we're in the we're in the ballpark. Uh, we could get it more accurate, obviously, if we took some more time to do uh, tighter measurements, increase the time base on the score, for example, so we could get more, more accurate time measurements. But I think this is good enough to prove that we can do it by measurement and do it by calculation and everything works out. But now we understand what our how the impedance works of the overall circuit. Just one last thing, I think. And once we get here, as well, I did mention that all these are proportional. So VR is proportional to R, VC is proportional to XC, VS is proportional to Z. That's why we can use the same angle, whether we're talking about voltages or resistances and reactances or impedances. Good. That's the most complicated thing that we've talked about so far. Just keep rewinding it and redoing it and you'll 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 figure it all out in the end. And there's a ton of videos online that it, they explain how to do this, but essentially we we measure the voltage across here, we measure the voltage across here, we subtract this from that and we get VR and then on the scope we can measure the time difference from the time difference we can calculate the phase difference or the phase angle we can pop that into this equation so we know what this angle is and we know that adjacent is R it's real then we multiply R by by this and we get XC fantastic okay now let's let's go even more complicated and take a look at the rat filter in the op amp gain so this is what we have in the the rat circuit and this represents the r1 value and now we've got two legs to this thing so we've got a 560 and a 4.7 microfarad cap and we've got a 47 ohm and a 2.2 microfarad cap so these are both got different reactances and different frequency responses so first of all let's let's just pick a, a low frequency because this is a a low frequency attenuator say 30 hertz which was the the frequency that we used in the previous example plug it into our xc equals 1 over 2 pi fc calculation and let's see what the reactance of these two guys is going to be and then we can work out by incrementing the frequency what the reactance is going to be as we increase the frequency with this circuit i've plotted the whole thing out in a spreadsheet so we can see how gain changes over frequency so we've got three major columns here this is leg one, this is leg two, this is the overall impedance, and then this is the gain plotted here. As we go higher in frequency, XC decreases, and you can see in the graph, once we get past a kilohertz, it starts to flatten out because it, the gain is now purely dependent on the resistive element, which doesn't have a frequency response. But if we look at both legs now, let's go into some details. We have a column here called Z. We have to do a, a vector sum of R and XC, so we know that Z squared equals XC squared plus R squared, so Z equals the square root of XC squared plus R squared. So that's how we get this column same with this column and then we can see the overall parallel impedances of these two major major columns over here and then we assume that the feedback resistor is about 20 kilo ohms which we established could be around the halfway point and I divide it through with the impedance of the leg and that's how we get that gain curve and you can see the gain increases as we go higher in frequency because the value of XC is getting lower and the gain it becomes more as i just said earlier the gain becomes more dependent on the values of the resistors good stuff thanks for watching and thanks for your patience it's been a long long technical one but i think it's a really important subject to understand gain structures around op amps and their dependence on frequency please like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video